Good evening, GANIC members. Welcome to our monthly meeting for January 2022. I'm watching the numbers go up as the attendees are coming in. So welcome everyone. So we will be getting started very shortly. You can see we've got a big group here and I like seeing all our numbers going up. So please feel free to leave a message in chat and to let us know how you're doing. Happy New Year to everyone. Yes, thank you, Michael. Happy New Year to everyone. And we will be getting started very, very shortly. Please mute everyone. If you are not speaking at the moment, please mute. And yes, and if you would like to, you can choose the speaker view to follow the meeting. All right. The agenda will be put into the chat in just a moment. So yeah, Jeremy's just posting that. It's going to be a pretty straightforward meeting tonight. We don't have guest speakers apart from ourselves, so which was going to be a lot of fun. We're going to um, hear from all our committee chairs uh, due to the vicissitudes of COVID. That's why we are all here in our little boxes instead of being in person. So yes, there's, there's the agenda. Thank you very much. So happy new year, everybody. All right. Oh, from Dublin, Jackie's in Dublin. That's nice. I'm in Jersey, so here we go. <laughs> and so is Jonathan, right? So, <laughs> all right, and I see Michael's at the South Street Seaport and John's at Lincoln Center and Kit is in Central Park. I like seeing all the different backgrounds. All right. Okay, so one more minute. We'll just get a few more people to come in. And if you have questions or comments, please put them in the chat, but please remember to address to everyone. Okay, make sure it says to everyone. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy just put that in there too. So make sure it says to everyone so that um, people can, um, can see your comments because right now they're just going to the hosts and the panelists. So make sure it goes to everyone, unless you just want to address the hosts and um, panelists. Okay, all right. So let's get started. And I'm gonna start um, just welcoming you all again to our meeting. This is the meeting for January. We did want to have it in person, but um, we had to move to Zoom and this will be available as a recording. Um, as, soon as, as soon as the meeting's over, Jeremy, we'll post it to, <clears throat> to YouTube. So let's get started. Again, the agenda has been posted to the chat. So you're welcome to click on that to have a look. So I'd like to start off um, by wishing everybody a very happy new year. I hope it's healthy and safe and calm and we can get back to uh, some semblance of normality um, in the next few weeks. Um, and um, I really hope everybody's doing well. I see a lot of, I know a lot of people are going through positive um, cases here and there, so. Just a reminder, you know, you don't know the drill, get your vaccine, get your booster and stay safe. All right, so I'd like to start the meeting, first of all, by thanking um, our outgoing board members. Okay, and thanking them for all the work they've done, for everything they've con uh, contributed to GANIC, for their time, for their efforts, for their dedication. Um, really three extraordinary people. Bob Gelber, Deborah Blau, and Mike Morgenthal. You know, we so, so appreciate everything um, you did for GANIC on the board and are continuing to do for GANIC as active, active members. So thank you very, very much. And your work and your dedication is really appreciated by all of us. I'd like to welcome our three new board members, our three uh, new members at large, Anne McDermott, Beth Goff and Kit Garrett, you can see on the screens right now. And we're really lucky to have these lovely ladies with us. It's nice having more women on the board. I have to say I'm very happy about that too. And then of course, um, thanks to everyone who stayed on the board and our dedicated secretaries, Patrick and John, our intrepid 
treasurer who is the dog's body of the of the board who does everything all the grunt work so thank you so much jeremy and of course our vice presidents kevin and jonathan so it's really um a great great board and i'm so looking forward to working with all of you and um to doing more great things for Ganic. and on that note i'd like to thank everyone uh, for giving me the opportunity to still serve as president of this fantastic organization and just to you know i i've always done it 100% and i'll keep doing it 100% for organic for organic members and really for um tour guiding in, in general so thank you all it's really an honor to have been reelected and i really look forward to the next 2 years hopefully with more in person meetings and fewer um little boxes on our computer screens so um with that, um, I just, as I said before, um, you know, because of COVID, because of Omicron, we're all here again in Zoom. And so the board made this decision to be better safe than sorry and to change for the month of January. That's why we're meeting um, here now. And that's also why we have postponed the holiday party. Okay, for now, it looks like it will be um, in February, February 22nd. But do keep an eye out in the announcements and in the emails um, for more details and more inf information about it. We're still planning on going to Fogo de Chao, which is right in um, Midtown, and it's going to be a really fun time. But we want to have it be, uh, you know, a safe gathering, and we want to see everybody in person. So we thought it would be better to delay it a bit to postpone it into February. So February between International Tourist Guide Day and the Ghana Gap Awards and the holiday party, it's going to be tour guides partying all the time. All right, so we're going to do that. And we also would like to have um, what we're doing today with the um, what we've sort of nicknamed Committee Con um, and Kevin Lawrence will explain it in greater detail. We hope to have a form, some kind of, of, of you know, rendition of this in person. Okay, sooner rather than later. Okay, so stay tuned for that as well. Now, when it comes to COVID and GANIC, the board last year, we decided that the new board in January at our board meeting, we have one coming up on January 17th, that we would decide what our policies would be going forward. Um, and it may be just um, for a few months at a time. Things are moving so quickly. Things are changing so quickly. Um, first and foremost in our minds is keeping everyone safe. So while we'd love to be together as much as possible, sometimes that is not possible. And so the board will discuss that um, at our board meeting, which we'll also be doing via Zoom, but we'll discuss that in detail and really hash it out. And then of course, we will let you and let the members know all that um, you know, as soon as we've made any decisions. Now, um, coming up in January, we've got the NFTGA, the National Federation of Tourist Guides Association, is holding a virtual conference in lieu of their live in-person conference, was, which was to have been in San Antonio um, in mid-January. So what we're going to do is, uh, the, the NFTGA is going to have their board meeting on January 26, when the new NFTGA board will be elected and our very own Michael Dillinger by then will be president of NFTGA. So uh, he's moving up. Yes, I know, glutton for punishment. But what I really want to promote to everyone is on the 27th, Rick Steves will be speaking. Um, he was reserved as the keynote speaker for the NFTGA conference. Um, and he's still going to speak and he's going to do it virtually. It'll be 11 central time, which is noon um, Eastern time. And it's, you know, it's us, it, he's speaking directly to guides, speaking directly to us. And I don't know if any of you um, were at the IATDG virtual conference last year when he spoke, uh, had a wonderful conversation and it was so great. It was so interesting. It was so inspirational. He's really, really a fun, fun guy to listen to. I mean, I hope you all do watch his videos and follow what he does. Um, and he's, you know, he's a tour guides guide. I mean, he he's really knows the way we work and and um, and what you know makes us tick. And so it's going to be a really fun thing to do. So you'll see the link um, in the chat if one of you guys could drop that into the chat to register for it. You do need to register for it ahead of time, okay, because then you will be sent the link to that, okay. So it's going to be on January 27th, all right, and the NFTGA, um, they're, they're going to be sponsoring that. So look out in the chat for that. But also you'll see that will um, the NFTGA, they, they have their own Facebook page, but also we'll make sure to get that announcement out 
to everybody again. So that's Rick Steves on the um, on the 27th. Okay. So that's really all that I have for now. Okay, we are going to be um, going right into the um, the conversation with all our committee chairs. Okay, and this will be recorded. So if you do have to step out, um, it will be recorded so you can follow it later. But what this hopes to be is a is a dialogue as much as we can have a, a dialogue here on Zoom. So I'm going to let Kevin Lawrence, uh, our vice president and organizer of this of this part of the meeting, to um, to take it away. Okay, so thanks everybody. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Emma, and good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. I hope everyone is well. Uh, this panel discussion actually grew out of the panel discussion that we had previously on Guide Week, in which we introduced the value of a, a volunteer trade organization and how it can help guides. Uh, and then out of that, uh, from talking with one another, we wanted to dedicate a day and sort of break up the format of how our meetings usually are. We have these wonderful speakers, but very often it puts the members in this sort of passive role and we wanted people to be more interactive. Now, unfortunately, of course, because of the Omicron variant, uh, we are forced to come back here, but I still think it's really worthwhile for us to sit down and really hear the, the amazing amount of work that our volunteer members do on the various committees and invite you all who are listening to this at home to think about ways in this new year that you might want to also volunteer. And I'm sure that our committee chairs are going to be talking about what ways their committees uh, can benefit you and also how they can benefit from your volunteer uh, activity on their boards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go alphabetically down the board and at a future opportunity, I should say that we are going to try to uh, have that more interactive element of a committee con, a real convention where people can go from table to table and interact and share ideas and think about ways in which they can uh, maybe help the, the committee meet what their purviews are uh, within the organization. But what we're gonna do tonight is we're just going to do this virtually and go alphabetically and people will give about a three minute introduction and I will be the, the timekeeper. Um, so our first committee is going to be awards committee and Matthew is going to, uh, Matthew Baker. Thank you, Kevin. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Excellent, all right. So Kevin, thank you very much for setting this up. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, now I am sharing my screen and my sound because when Kevin said we were going to make a little presentation. I did what I always do. I made a video. So here is that. The awards committee is in charge of producing the annual Gannick Apple Awards, which in the past eight years have become the association's signature event. We promote Gannick not by tooting our own horn about how great we are, but by telling our civic community how great they are. Producing this gala requires a lot of hands on deck. We need people who know the internet and can sift through an organization's website and help determine what individual is most appropriate to invite to the gala on their behalf. And what email address, beyond the basic info at email, is best used to communicate with them and confirm their attendance. Because the show is so expensive, one of the most crucial aspects of the show is ads and sponsorships that help offset our budget. Each time an advertisement flashes across the screen or shows up in the program, it's paid for. We need people who know how to sell ads and sponsorships and can get a yes where others might get a no. If you have any background or skills in this, we need you on board. We also need people who can help us cast the show. We've had people like Marcus Samuelson presenting in food, uh, Jeff Spurgeon presenting in radio, and Roma Torre presenting in journalism as well as hosts like Brian Stokes Mitchell, Bill Ritter, and the Bowery Boys. We have learned from experience that going through a celebrity's friends or family gets us a yes or a polite no. Going through their professional managers gets us ignored. So contacts are everything. If you think you can help us with these relationships, we would love to have you on board. The show itself is carefully scripted. If you can write fun tour content, you can write fun awards banter. If writing is your jam, we need you. For however long COVID lasts, 
we appear to be doing the gala online. This means we need people who are good with internet meeting platforms like Zoom and YouTube Live. We pre-record everything except the attendance speeches, but we need people who can help maintain a smooth transition between the pre-recorded segments and the live ones so that no one realizes just how much Hocus Pocus is going on. We hope to be back to the live shows soon so we can reinstate the red carpet, which is everyone's favorite part. Well, nearly everyone's. That means we will need people who can help with stage ushering, seating plans, catering matters, and other aspects of event planning. And that's our committee, my friends. We can never have too many people. There's work for everyone, and it's a lot of fun. The late great Lee Gelber said that in all of his years in Gannick, this was the single most rewarding project he'd ever been a part of. Thank you. Okay, how to unshare. Stop share. There we go. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much. Um, and uh, I should have also mentioned that on the agenda, it lists all of the emails. If you do, if, the, if that was a great presentation and you hear just how much the awards committee does and how much help they need. So if you think that you have the skill sets that are going to uh, be useful for, to work along with Matthew and, and the other great committee members, you can find the address on uh, the email address on the agenda for the awards committee. All right, uh, up next, we have uh, the certification committee and Michael Dillinger. Oh, great. And I've got to follow that wonderful presentation by Matthew. <laughs> Tough act to follow. Anyway, yes, I represent the certification committee. So the certification committee is a program designed for members, whether they are veteran guides or new guides, and it's a chance to develop and enhance their guiding skills and to keep abreast of the changes in our ever-changing industry and make sure they're always at the top of their form. The, the program is built around each participant creating their own special tour. And along the way, we cover five main elements, which are building a tour, storytelling, um, presentation techniques, logistics, and customer service. And a number of our, our members who have taken this course already, especially veteran guides, have hit the jackpot in a way because the tours they have developed as their final project, they have gone on to sell and offer for money to clients and to tour operators. So it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for Gannick as well. Now, serving on the committee usually entails having been a successful participant in the program because committee members administer the, the classes and we, we do the evaluations and that kind of thing. However, as we have now developed and grown and we're expanding and evolving the program, we do have some special needs. And so we're reaching out for this these particular needs. We're looking for anyone who's got expertise in um, um, learning management systems, online learning management systems, because we are creating a more online program that will be accessible to more people. So we would need some help doing that program. And um, we also need a pro someone experienced in project management. There are a lot of moving parts among other things. Every successful participant then has to maintain their certification by continuing their professional development year after year, and they have to file that the information with the committee. And so we need a way to kind of manage that program more. And so we're looking for somebody with that kind of experience. And then finally, we are looking for someone with video production and editing as we create this online program. And so these three particular areas, we would uh, embrace you coming into the committee. You wouldn't be teaching on the committee at that level, but you would certainly be be providing a valuable, valuable service. And I'm happy to talk to anyone about these three areas or anyone just interested in the program in general. This is a great program. I know there's several people that even on this on the board, but in Gannick as well, that can tell you what they got out of it and how successful their final projects have been for them in terms of sharing it with travelers. So uh, I'm open to uh, hearing from anybody and certainly happy. We, we don't have a date yet for when we're going to be launching the next uh, version of this, but uh, look forward to the announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, and yeah, I also sit on the certification committee and have taken the certification course, and it really is a great way to uh, get involved with GANIC. 
So our next committee is going to be the Education Committee, uh, Nina Mende, and we actually have a video to, sh to share for that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you were under time, uh, Michael Dillinger, so. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, I want to thank Lisa Pucci, Lisa, I'm sorry, uh, Lisa Puccio uh, for uh, developing that. I hope it puts you all in a New York state of mind there coming from uh, New Jersey. 
I do want to say that uh, a number of those FAM tours actually were the products of people's participation in the certification program. Uh, and although we have a core group of members that are on the committee, uh, the education committee, we always need our members to be volunteering ideas and other types of uh, efforts to, to make things like International Day, for example, uh, a, a really critical part of what education does. So please do keep in contact with us if you would like to get involved more with education as well. Our next uh, committee is going to be Ethics and Oversight Committee and uh, a fellow education committee member, Susan Birnbaum is going to address that. Susan? I think you're on mute, Susan. Susan, you're on mute. Um, didn't come through. All right. Sorry. Happy New Year. And thank you, Kevin, is what I said. And I also said that the um, ethics committee is a little bit different. Um, but I want to make sure because we it's basically um, by invitation. And it's a small committee and we only meet when there's an issue of ethics. And I just thought it might be um, valuable for me to just tell you the ethics, the code of ethics, so that if anything came up and you thought the committee should address it, you'd be able, you would get in um, touch with us. And so I will just read this. We have 12 points. A GANIC member will have a valid New York City guides license as issued by the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs. It is illegal to work as a tour guide in New York City without a license. A GANIC member will deal with clients in a professional manner in the execution of his or her duties as a tour guide, escort, hospitality staff, or any other tourism related service, service for which the member is legally contracted. Number three, a GANIC member will arrive at the tour starting point at the agreed upon time. If the guide is late, the guide will do his or her best to compensate the group for the delay. If the group arrives late, the GANIC member is not ob obligated to extend the tour. Number four, a GANIC member will be well-groomed and attired in a neat and clean manner and will abide by any specific attire requirements agreed upon at the time of being hired. And number five, a GANIC member will have a wide range of knowledge of New York City, including such areas as history, architecture, local customs, mass transit usage, and tour routes. And number six, a GANIC member will be knowledgeable about the sites he or she has been contracted to visit and of the rules and regulations governing the use of those sites. The member will adhere to and advise the group of such rules. Number seven, a GANIC member will do his or her best to fulfill the group's itinerary and will advise the group leader or responsible party when major adjustments are needed to, due to circumstances beyond the member's control, such as, but not limited to, weather, traffic, parades, street closures, long lines at attractions, and or group tardiness. This one's the next one's a long one. While, our, while tour guides like others in the service industry are accustomed to receiving a gratuity, a GANIC member will not solicit gratuities from the tour group. The only exception is when the member is working for a company that has a specific policy permitting such solicitations, such as those companies offering double decker or other daily tours. And then the member will adhere to that company's policy. In all other situations, and this is underlined, it is the duty of the tour operator to educate the group regarding the gratuity. Number nine, a GANIC member will respect the confidentiality of the clients they work with. A member will not solicit or accept a job from a client of the company that has hired him or her. Members will not distribute business cards without the knowledge of the company that has hired them. And number 10, a GANIC member will be of the language proficiency they have stated for the job they have been hired to do. Any proficiency less than, quote, fluent, fluent unquote, should be noted on, in writing by the GANIC member at the time of hiring. 
And number 11, in the event of a complaint being filed against a GANIC member, the member agrees to abide by the majority decision of the GANIC Board of Directors as to the action needed to address the complaint. And the last one is, in the event that a GANIC member performs any tourism related service outside New York City, he or she will abide by all codes, rules and regulations of said location and will continue to follow all elements of this code of ethics as they may apply. So if any, you know, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them, but it's pretty straightforward. And um, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, my English fluency sometimes is not good on some days, but um, <laughs> all right. Um, our next uh, committee is going to be Government Relations Committee and our intrepid secretary, Patrick Casey. Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year to you all. Thank you, Kevin. Now, the Government Relations Committee has long, its Government Relations Committee started to uh, press the Department of Consumer Affairs to recognize and support our licenses and to pursue those who were operating as tour guides without licenses. Our Agenda has expanded with 289A. For those who, have, uh, who are not aware of it, 289A, of course, is a pending piece of legislation that will put and require by law licensed New York City guides back on the double decker buses. We did not get the vote on this legislation last year. The laws, the, uh, um, the proposal still exists. We have about five or six sponsors that have carried over from the previous term. So we're going to be reaching out to every member of the Guides Association. Uh, if you are a constituent of anyone in council, which means if you are a registered voter in the city of New York, you're on the committee. Welcome, great to have you on board. We need all of your support. The idea that we can have GANIC members walking into these councilmen's offices uh, to convince them to support 289A, to add their names to the sponsor list is invaluable. We're not gonna send you out on your own either. We're gonna have you debrief, we're gonna have you prepped. I'm going to be developing press packets that anybody can have to look after the uh, work and the future of our fellow guides and our presence in this industry. And this is in the, uh, is the first steps in what is going to have to be the longer view of GANIC becoming a voice in New York City politics as it pertains to tourism. Tourism is going to be more valuable to the city of New York now as we come out of COVID than it ever has been before. Our city's relied on real estate to fill its coffers. We're not gonna get that real estate market back. Let's go over that $63 billion industry that we are a part of here in the city of New York. We need our voices heard. Your Assistance is invaluable. And specifically, if you have government background, if your second cousin twice removed on your mother's side is a council member, great. Chief of staff, great. Legislative director, great. If you have worked on lobbying before, love to have you. If you are a retired legal eagle as a lawyer or a paramedic, we would love to have you. Those are a few specifics we could use, but every member of this association is in effect an extension of the Government Relations Committee as we look after our fellow members and our place in this business in the greatest city in the world. Thank Great. you, everybody. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so our next committee member is, uh, our next committee, I'm sorry, is Industry Relations and Michael Morgenthal. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And I apologize in advance if my voice is a little scratchy. I'm on day six of COVID um, in my, stuck in my bedroom, bedroom bunker right here. So, uh, but uh, like many, I'm thankful that my symptoms are not very severe. So if anybody hasn't gotten vaccinated yet, get vaccinated, because uh, they would be much more severe if I wasn't. Anyway, I uh, want to share a presentation with you. So just let me know if you guys are seeing my screen okay. Yes, we are. Okay, great. Um, so, here is uh, just a quick overview of the Industry Relations Committee, uh, of which I've served as the chair for about five years now, I believe, maybe six. Um, and uh, just to echo what other people have said so far, 
Uh, we don't have any specific skill sets that we look for for members of the committee. We want as many people to join this committee as, as possible. Uh, if you do have writing skills, organizational skills, and schmoozing skills, those come into the most handy on our committee, but absolutely anybody and everybody is welcome. We're always looking for more people to, to, join, to join our committee. So our mission statement is um, we are uh, the main liaison between Yannick and the rest in the travel tourism industry in New York City, around the US and across the globe. We have ongoing duties and responsibilities. Uh, number one, finding and booking meeting locations for monthly membership meetings. Uh, and lately, Bob Gilber has been handling most of that work along with Harvey Davidson. So thank you to both of them, but we're always looking for uh, more potential venues. Um, administering the industry partner program, which includes soliciting new potential partners, working to connect GANIC members to existing industry partners, and coordinating votes on new industry partner applications. Uh, we then also administer the GANIC strategic affiliate program, which is slightly different than the industry partner program, although pretty much the same guts. Uh, and we identify new attractions for possible site inspections. And of course, we hold regular committee meetings, not really scheduled on a monthly basis, but on a uh, mostly monthly basis. So um, one of the big uh, responsibilities of our, of our committee is representing GANIC at industry functions. Uh, and we consistently advocate for GANIC guides by representing GANIC at these events and maintaining regular contact with various industry associations, including these. Um, some of the most important ones, NYC and company, obviously. Uh, we served this past year, or the past two years. Uh, I, I served as chair of the Industry Relations Committee uh, on, the, on the New York City and company, NYC and company uh, strategic affiliation, uh, allied affiliation for tourism recovery uh, committee or whatever they called it. Uh, NISTIA, New York State Tourism Industry Association, CIDA, IITA, the American Bus Association, U.S. Travel, U.S. TOA, which is the U.S. Tour Operator Association. You already heard NFTGA as well as WFTGA. Uh, Arrival, which is a conference mostly for tour operators. Uh, IATDG, the International Association of Tour Directors and Guides, and the Concierge Association of New York City. There are others, but these are just a few that we chose to highlight. And so we were, um, our committee represents GANIC at various functions, uh, mostly online these days, but certainly in person as well. Some of the past accomplishments of the committee, Guide Week 2021, which was a combination of learning and job fair uh, functionality and some fun online socialization as well. Uh, before that, we were organizing and actually started uh, the job fair and talent exchange back in 2017. Uh, we came up with the idea and administered Tour Your Own City, which was an attempt to market tours from GANIC members to local New York area people. Uh, during the height of the pandemic. Uh, and we also created the COVID cancellation tour database, which helped in small part to allow 1099 workers, uh, like most of us are, to receive unemployment benefits during um, the pandemic. Uh, some of our upcoming in initiatives are Guide Week 2022. I'll talk a little bit more about that in my committee report tonight. Uh, the Industry Partner Program 2.0, partnering with bids on strategic affiliations and various programs like FAM tours that can help us better learn their neighborhoods and then uh, their uh, members get to know our tour guides and members. Uh, and then uh, starting a one pager program uh, to distribute members one pager pagers at various industry trade shows. And there'll be a little more on that in my report tonight uh, as well. We're, like I said, we're always looking for members to, uh, GANIC members to join our committee. Uh, so if you are interested, please email industryrelations at Um And as I said, everybody's welcome, but a few of those skill sets uh, would certainly be uh, most welcome. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at industryrelations at Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. And I hope you feel better. Um, I just want everyone to know, I know some people are having a problem seeing the actual presentations, the PowerPoint presentations. I'm going to post these later. I'll, I'll ask the committee chairs to share them and we'll post them on the GANIC website and get those uh, links out to you so that you can see these a little bit later if you weren't able to, to see what Mike was presenting. All right, our next um, panel is going to be uh, Insurance Relations Committee and Jeremy Wilcox, who's not actually the chair, but he'll explain why he's addressing you guys. So hello everyone. So for the 
two of you who don't know who I am, I'm Jeremy Wilcox. I'm the treasurer of the association. So uh, obviously insurance is a finance issue. So I'm handling this in, uh, in lieu of our chair, Tommy Wilkinson, who if he's out there, uh, we wish him a happy new year. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly share my, um, I'm not sure why it's not doing this, the uh, page for the um, liability insurance. Give me a second here. I'm just going to put it in the uh, the chat. I'm having a, an issue, but um, basically, the liability insurance is a optional thing that is available to members. Um, it is for your coverage as a you know individual guide. It's not tour operator insurance. So if you own an LLC or a tour company, your company is not insured. You are insured as an individual guide. Um, and we've been getting it for the last two years through the NFTGA, uh, which gives us a better rate than we were when we were getting it on our own. Currently, liability insurance is $99 per member. Um, and you can pay directly online or mail us a check. The page I put in the, uh, the chat um, does have a, um, a uh, link, uh, has, sorry, an explanation of kind of what it covers and what it doesn't cover and things like that. I uh, just wanna quickly say that for those who have paid already uh, for 2022, I'm still waiting to get the certificate from the NFTGA's insurance coordinator. As soon as I have that, you will have that. Um, but yeah, basically it's just an optional program and it's a great benefit. Uh, $99 a year ultimately is a drop in the bucket. If you're at all concerned, we highly recommend getting this coverage, but you are under no obligation to do so. Okay, great. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, so our next committee is uh, IT Web and President Gus Gonzalez. Hi, everybody. Of course, I didn't mute myself. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So just a moment, and I will do that. And I'll be just going, you walking you through a little bit of the GANIC website. Okay, so you should all be able to see the main website, okay? Just to point out a few things. You, when I'm, I'm logged in right now, as you can see, my name is logged in up at the top. You'll see the member partner log in or log out, all right? And when you're logged in as a GANIC member, everyone gets to see this public part of the page, but the part that will interest you the most, of course, is the members menu. This is where you should go to find out information about um, events that are going on. Here's our calendar. Okay. You can also close that. You can also find the announcements, forums, and documents. Now, this is very important because anytime you get an email <clears throat> from Gannick and you get an, an announcement, and my um, the emeritus chair is Mark Landman, who also does a lot of the, the grunt work in the behind the scenes and making sure the website's site um, stays clean, um, you will, he will send an announcement and we've set it up so that all members automatically receive all major announcements. So you should have that. You can only get rid of those if you change your subscriptions. I'll show you that in just a moment. But right here, you can see the virtual events. Okay, you can see that right there. You can find the insurance information is there as well. And these top ones are all the most important ones. You can just click right on those. You'll also find the discussion forum. So if you want to bring up a topic, Cindy Ladopoulos um, brought up discussing how to um, tours coming into, um, into the city, the issues with children being vaccinated for COVID and PCR testing, things like that. That's a great place to go to. And then our documents. Okay, the documents have the members, um, the membership meeting minutes are there, guidelines, the candidate statements for the election that was just um, happening and so on. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out to everybody, because we do have sort of two ways to be getting into GANIC. Now, this is the main website, all right? This is the main website. And this is the public facing website that everyone gets to see. So the most important thing is to take care of your member profile. So you go in there and you can view it and you can edit it. So you go into edit and you click on to edit the various parts of it. You can add all the different information, your contact information, how your name would like to appear. You have to have your full name in there and here in your bio, okay? And then also your special tours. Now this is key. Your special tours is searchable by keyword, okay? So let me just, um, when you've done some any changes, also keep in mind, you need to 
save, all right, save your profile. All right, always save if you make any changes, okay? But if someone goes to find a guide, all right, and they go to find a guide and say they want to find um, a food tour, you go into special tours, they can type in food. If you do food tours and you have food written anywhere in your profile, your name will show up. Okay, so it's very easy to make sure your name comes up for all these special tours. Now that is your main member profile. You will also have a profile with um, Wild Apricot, which is our other, um, our other way of accessing member information. So hold on a moment. So let me just move this out the way. So when you go into Gannick, all right, because this is your, our main page. Oops, this just froze up on me. Um, hold on. I just have to stop the share a moment and switch back to the other page. Okay, I'll go back to sharing. Okay. So you'll also see this page and you'll see at the top it says ganic.wildapricot.org. This is our members management software. Okay, and this is where you can put your profile information where you can type out your, where you can print out your membership card if you'd like. And this also has your invoices and payments. All right, that you've paid for your membership dues and all of that is right there. So just keep in mind, we've got these two different pages. All right, the main membership page, this is the one where you can interact with Gannick and you can get the information about events and about um, fellow members and how you can adjust your account and your profile. One thing with the account, when you click on your account, you can go into your subscriptions and this is a way to see what kind of pages and what kind of things that you can follow um, on, the, um, on the Gannick website. So you don't get constant announcements or you do get constant announcements, depends on what you would like. So if you would like to have the different um, types, if you want to have um, be announced whenever there's a comment about an art tour, if you want to have information about um, a, a different change has gone on with a podcast, if you know, for our podcast to revive, those kinds of things. So let me go back to the main page. The problem is with me showing this to you is because I've got a couple more bells and whistles because I'm one of the admins. But when you're logged in, you'll see the black bar, you will see your name, and then you'll be good, able to go in. So once again, remember your member profile, that's the main place to go. Make sure you have a nice photograph up. When your photo is up, you go into the automatic rotation of the guides to come, of guides um, being dis, um, put on display on the main page. So you'll see on our home page, you have a featured member. Here's Jack Eichenbaum. If you have a nice photo, I mean, even a nasty photo, if you have a photo, all right, you're, you will appear in the rotation. This is completely randomized. Um, this is not selected by us. This is all completely random. If you have photographs that you would like to have shown, you can send them to the IT committee, it at gannick.org, and they will be posted, okay, onto the Gannick website. So we have a gallery of our different images. So I'm gonna stop my share now. I'm not sure um, uh, if I'm over time, if I'm doing okay with the timing, but if you have any questions, always remember, always remember to just send them to it at gannick.org. That's the easiest way to get um, to us. If you cannot log in, you, when you get to your main page, it'll say if you forget your password, you can reset it. That's very easily done. And any other kind of um, IT difficulties, always feel free to let us know. We're happy to help. Now, in terms of the IT committee, if you have experience with web page design, I know there's been discussion of our website and some people like it, some people don't like it. Um, we want to you know, zhuzh it up a bit and make it look a little uh, more dynamic, uh, a little more interesting. Um, we're going to be launching hopefully soon the industry partners page, which will give our industry partners a way to really interact with Gannett guides. So if you have any kinds of web experience like that, please let us know. Um, and we'll, I will be posting when we'll have our next meeting and it will be an open meeting on Zoom. So I'll make sure to invite everyone. Um, Lisa, how many people on the IT committee? There are five of us right now. There are five of us right now, I believe. So Mark, me, and me. no, sorry, six of us. There's six of us right now. But um, I will send out um, an announcement uh, when we're going to have our next IT committee meeting. Things are slowing down at the observatory so I can do a little more organic stuff these days. Okay, so that's it from me. Thank you, Emma. Um, our next 
committee is going to be the Multilingual Guides Committee, and it is John Sumlack. Hello, can you see me? Okay. Yes, we can see you. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm going to keep this brief. Uh, my name is uh, John Sumlack, and one of my roles here is the chair of the Multilingual Guides Committee. And I have to confess that the committee has been a bit inactive since the COVID began, which just kind of refocused efforts in other directions. Uh, but I hope to uh, do, to revive activity here. Uh, GANIC is, of course, a member organization of over 300 guides, but over 80 guides who are qualified to give tours in multiple languages, languages other than English. And we currently offer tours in over 20 languages uh, through guides who are members of the Guides Association of New York City. You can search for guides by language offered at the uh, guides, excuse me, at the GANIC website. And if you are a multilingual guide, you can list yourself as a multi lingual guide in your profile. Uh, we do have a kind of a two-step process for that. Uh, the, uh, I, uh, the IT committee in consultation with the Multilingual Guides Committee does just sort of uh, check to, you know, we just verify that people are, are can in fact speak a multiple language. Almost always it's just a formality, but, and we just would just go ahead and verify whatever languages you ask, but it is something that is done uh, by the uh, IT committee uh, as a technical matter. Uh, the committee is, is a very, very kind of relaxed committee. We're open to members of different uh, skill sets. We're, uh, we're looking to have events with international uh, you know, interest. Last year, we had a presentation by guides that I had made connections with at the World Federation of Tourist Guides Associations, where they presented a, a uh, did a presentation about a topic of interest uh, between, uh, uh, excuse me, a topic of Ukrainian interest with a New York connection. And I, I thought it was a really nice presentation that several guides uh, um, attended. And I'm looking, I'm hoping that we can do presentations of that nature. We also uh, strive to make sure to support guides in New York who are of multiple languages, uh, who, who do tours in multiple languages. So if you are a multilingual guide, if you're looking to you know, find, uh, find a, a, a kind of collegiality with other multilingual guides, or if you're looking for support with giving multilingual tours, that is to say, how can GANIC help you as a multilingual guide, uh, feel free to contact the committee at multilingualguides at GANIC.org and feel free to uh, uh, contribute ideas to the committee or perhaps uh, become a member. Thank you very much. And uh, it's also been a pleasure watching these tremendous presentations by the other committees. Okay, thank you, John. And our next committee is the newsletter committee and Dave Gardner. He can't come flying in, but. Uh... <laughs> Hello, everybody. Well, my, my lanyard can fly in or something. <laughs> Sorry, the no running uh, entrance this week, but anyway, uh, yes, it is myself. I am Dave and I am the editor of our newsletter guidelines. This is the most recent issue, but uh, we have had a, a quarterly production a deadline we've set ourselves. And since you typically ask anybody, everybody, the deadline I have set for tonight, 10 o'clock tonight, but uh, thinking about that, it may have been a burden on anybody involved in tonight's meeting, so I won't do that again. But uh, anyway, tonight or around tonight is good. About 500 words or less, and as you're, I'm sure you're aware, we have the presidential column. We have great uh, reviews of tours themselves, and we have topical things about what's going on here. So this is your chance to contribute and uh, pitch in to this newsletter, which is for us, by us, about us and to us. And of course, I must give huge, enormous thanks to Linda Fisher. I am not exaggerating when I say that this would not be a thing without Linda. She is, yes, yes, yes. She is very, very helpful in many ways. So again, if you would like to have yourself 
somehow be involved in this, whether it's writing about somebody else's tour or something, the deadline is tonight, but tomorrow's okay or soon. Uh, the email is uh, seen here, it's in the newsletter itself. And as Emma was saying, you can go into our website and see past issues, the PDF, which is typically enhanced anyway. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Gannick. And of course, thank you to Emma. Yes, thank welcome. you. Thank you, Dave. Um, I'm sorry, I actually overlooked a committee uh, and that is the membership committee. So we're gonna rewind a little bit in the alphabet here and uh, do the membership committee with um, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Turr. Hey, it's me, Jonathan. Uh, I am the new chair of the membership committee and I'm also the interim chair of the membership committee, which means uh, I don't view this role as being particularly permanent. We are definitely looking for someone uh, to take over this role for the long term. Uh, what does membership do? Well, every time you show up to a GANIC meeting, someone from the membership committee is one of those wonderful, friendly, smiling faces that signs you in and makes sure uh, that we know that you've attended that meeting. Um, so that's one of the things that we uh, certainly love volunteers on the committee for. Uh, it's a really great kind of forward-facing way to be involved with the GANIC membership. Uh, we have a, a great team of people who do that already, and I think they'd probably be happy to share some space at the table uh, with you if you're interested. What else does membership do? Membership really is very much involved in the onboarding process of bringing new members into GANIC. It's been really pretty successful at that over the last couple of years. Um, we are looking to boost uh, a specific membership drive action coming up very shortly uh, to try to bring more members into GANIC as a very uh, directed effort. So for people who are interested in that kind of a project, we'd love to have you joining the committee. Uh, we will be doing some formalized, um, but not necessarily formal, new member orientations. Uh, so if you're interested in explaining to people how to get the most out of their GANIC experience, we would love to have you on board uh, as part of the committee. Um, we are going to be having regular committee meetings moving forward, so it's probably not going to be every month, but uh, It'll be a little more regular than it has been in the past. Some of the really fun things that people love about the membership committee are, of course, the events, the parties like the annual post-holiday party, the quarterly happy, uh, quarterly happy hours, uh, and there is maybe possibly some ideas about um, some new get-together options. So if you're interested in exploring any of that, helping out in terms of logistics, scouting locations, uh, for these events. Uh, there is a party subcommittee uh, within membership, so you can uh, join up with that as well. Um, and then there's a lot of behind the scenes paperwork um, in terms of getting membership packets out to new members, uh, in terms of making sure that all of those announcements go out to remind you uh, to renew your membership, et cetera, et cetera. So people who are interested in any of those different uh, ideas, uh, in terms of helping out uh, GANIC, we would love to have you join the committee. So thank you for your time. And I hope that uh, a lot of people are going to be emailing. <laughs> a lot of people are going to be emailing uh, membership at GANIC.org uh, and uh, volunteering to the committee. Uh, thank you, Matt Baker. The last time you told me that, uh, gray hairs started popping out of my chin. And every time I look at them, uh, I blame you for that. So thanks for thanks for that, Mr. Baker. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Jonathan. Um, and our last committee is going to be Public Relations Committee. And once again, Jeremy Wilcox. Hi, everyone. So I've got my GANIC shirt here. So as PR chairman, I'm always kind of representing GANIC. So I'll, I'll do a quick presentation. But basically, the Public Relations Committee is the most forward-facing committee in terms of outside the guiding community. We promote what GANIC is doing. So let me just bring up my presentation here. All righty. GANIC Public Relations Committee. Okay. And so some of the things that we do include basically getting GANIC out in the media. This is 
one of the toughest parts of my job is because, you know, when the media discusses tourism, they talk about attractions and hotels and numbers. They are very, as we learned during the pandemic, uninterested in guides uh, and guided experiences. So a big part of what our committee does is to change that dynamic and to make sure that tour guides and our importance in this, you know, multi, multi-billion dollar industry is not forgotten. Here's an example from the blog of um, last year when uh, Michael Morgenthal and I were on New York One to promote the Tour Your Own City initiative. Uh, New York One is a major get, and one of our goals is to get Gannick out in the media more. So if you have connections to people in the media, if you know reporters or if you know someone who might be willing to write a guide-friendly or guide-focused story, please let me know. Uh, I'll mention it again at the end, but we are public relations at gannick.org. Really want to get that going more. Um, and we also run, obviously, the Gannick social media, uh, which is another way that we promote what Gannick's doing. Here's a look at our public-facing Facebook page. So whenever Gannick is in the media, whenever we have a meeting, whenever uh, we are promoting something, I make sure it's there because this is how the public is aware of what we are doing on a regular basis. We also have, obviously, our Twitter account, um, which is GA of NYC on Twitter. Make sure if you are not already that you are following us and engaging with us there. And of course we have an Instagram. Whenever there is a fam tour or any live Gannick event, whenever Gannick is in the news, I make sure that that is there because a lot of these other you know, associations, it's not clear what they are doing. One of the things that I wanted to do when I became PR chair was make sure that on a monthly basis, People can just look at this social media and see what Gannick is doing. What are we doing other than just giving tours? We are, you can see here some recent images. We're at the World Trade Center for a presentation. We were in Diker Heights. Uh, we were at United Palace a month ago. Uh, Mark Livy there is giving a tour. Uh, Patrick Casey was on WNYC. Uh, John Semlack, um, you know, they're giving a fam tour. And that is one of my goals is, so, is to let people know what are we doing in this association and also what are we as guides doing? So if you as a guide, if you've been featured in the media or spotlighted somewhere, please let the committee know because we in turn would be happy to spotlight you from there. Um, and we also have you, a YouTube channel. All of our social media, by the way, is linked at the top of the Gannick website. If you go to gannick.org, you will see all our social media buttons. So you can follow us on all those channels. And so what goes up on the YouTube page in terms of what the public sees are all of these virtual monthly meetings or any content that is public. Um, and then we also do our regularly, uh, originally was sort of meant to be bi-weekly. We haven't been as active during the pandemic. So it's just sort of when things are happening, but we do have our MailChimp e-news blast. This is sent out to thousands of people in our contact list, just to summarize, you know, every so often what Gannick has been up to. Um, and you know, we're always looking for ideas of what can be promoted in there as well. And we do obviously have the Gannick blog on the uh, website. Let me go back to show you kind of what that looks like. So here is the Gannick blog. Um, and whenever Gannick members, again, are featured in the media or something that's worth writing about, uh, I always make sure that's featured there. One of the recent articles you can see, if you scroll down, was uh, Patrick von Rosendahl's great event where he went to the airport when international tourists returned and he he greeted them there with waffles and dinges and it was you know it's a great uh, way of promoting uh how tour guides are the ambassadors of new york city so again public relations at gannick.org if you think that you can help us promote gannick if you've got interesting ideas and again if you have contacts in the media that can help us uh very much want to encourage you to help our organization because i'm always looking for new ideas of how we can get the name of Gannick and not just Gannick, but tour guiding in general out there. So thank you. Well, thank you, Jeremy. And thanks to all of our committee chairs and to the great volunteer work that all of the committee members who we can't name, but uh, there are many out there, but we want more. And I know that sitting on these new member interviews that we have, you guys have skill sets because we've had everybody who are former architects to former zookeepers. Uh, and so there's lots of skills that we know you have that you can uh, bring to the table. Um, I think we have a little time for some Q&A. And so if you do have a question for either one of the committees and or a general question and or suggestions of how you think that we can better uh, organize the committee activity that and 
reach out to you to sort of inspire you to actually want to volunteer uh, a time, ideas, energy to the incredible array of work that you just heard about that uh, a handful of people are doing. We want more hands on deck. The, the more hands on deck, the more powerful or the more uh, potent Gannick is going to be, I guess. Um, so are there any questions or do the, is there anything that was overlooked that the committee chairs uh, want to? Yeah, yeah if I could jump in. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, just put them into the chat and everybody will, will see them there, but be sure to address to everyone or, or to host and panelists so we all get to see it. Sorry, Jeremy. Oh, I just want to say, since I uh, fixed my screen sharing issue, I just want to quickly share the uh, insurance page since I wasn't able to do that uh, before. So let me just bring that up really quick. So this is in the members menu. Uh, you could see on the side there, I'm scrolling, it says liability insurance info. It not only has information about the liability insurance policy, just the, again, the basics of it, uh, but it has a link where you can pay directly on PayPal or other information. So if you are interested in the insurance, if you haven't purchased it already, you can go to that page on the website and find out the information that you need. All right, great. So. Um... I'm not seeing any questions here so far. I, well, I just dropped the link into the chat with the contact information and committees. So you can find that directly there. It was posted in the agenda. But if you just go into the main menu of GANIC and it says about, and you just hover over about, it says about GANIC and it has contact information and committees. That's all right there. And so you can click right on it and send emails directly to those um, specific committees um, that you need to get in touch with. Yes, Jeremy. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, kind of add to this discussion since I know this was a goal of Kevin's is, you know, I know sometimes our organization has a reputation among certain people about being very clicky and that it's, you know, people say, oh, I always see the same people at the meetings. I always see the same people doing everything. I want to reiterate something that I know Emma has said and, and Kevin has said in the past, which is we do not want that to be the case moving forward. Uh, you know, one of the whole goals of kind of these presentation and showing you what GANIC does is to encourage you to uh, to join. Um, we very much want to be an open and available organization to our membership. We want every single member, whether they are a provisional member, whether they've been a member for 10 years or 10 minutes, to feel comfortable volunteering their time. Um, you know, I always, you know, like to remind people when I joined the PR committee, I had been a member of the organization for one month. Uh, six months later, I was chair of the committee. You know, do not be afraid to step up like that. You know, we need people who are going to be proactive. Uh, we are always happy to have more cooks in the kitchen. It seems counterintuitive, but you know, the thing that makes this organization work is the volunteerism of our members. And we really want more of that. And, you know, we want to be more diverse and, and more cooperative. So just wanted to reiterate that. I completely agree with uh, Jeremy on that. And it's, it makes me think of the famous Gandhi quote, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. You know, if you always see the same faces, add your face, you know, end of problem, you know. I'd like to just add something as, as the new kid on the block here, a member at large, is if anyone does have a specific question that you feel Gannett could be doing better or opening doors for you that we haven't discussed this evening, could you please put that in the chat? so that we can address that and make sure that we're not overlooking an area that would be really helpful to each one of you. And you also wanted yeah. to say something? Yeah, I just want to give a little testimony. Um, you know, I sort of joined GANIC right before the pandemic happened and I went to the meeting in Brooklyn and then I went to the other meeting and then the pandemic happened, the one over at the New York Historical Society. And I was one of those people who walked in and felt like, oh, I don't know anybody here and nobody, you know. But um, Nina mentioned on one of the meetings, you know, do a fam tour about something you know about. And I did the fam tour about the East Village rock and roll. And that was how I got involved and how I got to know everybody. And so I was sort of sitting on the sidelines until then. And then that was just my, my entrance in. So I just wanna encourage people that if you have an idea, as Jeremy just said, you know, just come forward and, you know, you gotta be a face among faces, I've always said. and. Um, it's taken two years, but now I feel like I know some people. <laughs> Thanks. 
and I just want to say titles, that. Notwithstanding, there are no perks to being a wallflower. Yeah. Um, I also want to say that don't get overwhelmed by, you know, the, the ambition of what these committees do it doesn't mean that you have to do all of it. When you're joining the committee, you're going to have support from other people. So I think one thing that might inhibit people from actually volunteering is that they feel like, oh, gosh, I'm going to be taking on, you know, conducting a whole certification class or something. You're not. You're not. That's not what we, we want. If you can just give a little bit of time or if you just have one idea, like Anne was just saying, one little fam tour might just get you more involved and you can find that little niche where you're going to help Gannick be that much stronger. So we have something in chat. Okay, yeah, so Lisa is saying a photo in the slide. Uh, I'm going to actually post that whole slideshow, Lisa, on the Gannick website and all of the uh, presentations that we had. And then, of course, this will be posted uh, uh, on the uh, YouTube channel uh, by Jeremy as part of public relations. Yes, so thank you. Thank you so much, um, Kevin. That was really great. And I see, yes, the kid was mentioning about reaching out to the education committee about a fam tour. There's a very straightforward form on the Gannick website. You just go to the announcements page and you'll see the link to go right in there. You fill out that form and you propose your fam tour. And it's just, um, I mean, it's just a ton of fun and it's incredibly nerve wracking and it's, you know, you're just putting yourself out there, but you're you know, get, gonna get feedback from your peers. So I think if you wanna get your feet wet, start with offering a fam and you'll get a lot of feedback that you might not even know you wanted, but it's gonna make your tour better. It really is. And, you know, it, and, and guiding guides is the hardest thing to do. So that will also be, really good training if you you know 50 school kids a dozen guides i'm trying to think of what's more complicated so yeah so the fam um jeremy just put it um put it there and yes matt you're right tour guides we are the worst tourists um and you wanted to pop in there i just want to give a testimony so pat uh mazuka came on my uh on my tour and i did not know that pat mazuka had worked for the guy who owned the bottom line and she introduced me to Alan Pepper, who she used to work for, who was the guy that owned the bottom line, which was the most important rock and roll club in New York City in the 70s and 80s. And I spoke to him on the phone for an hour. And I told him about when I saw Peter Gabriel and how it changed my life. And it was one of the most important nights of my life. And he was just blown away because he hadn't heard that in a long time, even though this is the man who put Bruce Springsteen on the map. Um, but I just say that to say that, you know, you take a little risk and you just never know who's going to know somebody or how it's going to lead in your life. And it was, just, that was like a beautiful moment for me. Just saying. Thank you. Thank you. Anne. Yeah. I think because I, because I did the fan probably give a testament that being involved with Gannick actually creates more job opportunities, even though this is on paid volunteerism uh, very often you're meeting people and you're creating contacts. They're going to send you job opportunities. Uh, and so the, again, it doesn't pay to be a wallflower, get involved, get, pe get people to know you, get them to know your personality. And John is saying here that he got a job offer just from, uh, you know, a mention in the Gannick newsletter. So this is great. All right. Um, this has been really, I want to thank all of the committee chairs. I think this has been very helpful and do look forward in the future where we will probably couple this maybe with an orientation session with the membership committee. Uh, but I think it would be really useful if we did have a in-person committee con where you can actually come here and hear less from us and we can hear more from you and your ideas. I think that that's what, and always, always your board members are here to hear from you. So if you have an idea or you have something that you want to contribute, you can always reach out to any of the board members and we can redirect you in the right avenue or make connections uh, you know, introductions virtually or in person. So um, please do think of that as a resource as well. Anything else that, Emma, if you want to? No, um, I don't think so. I think we can go into our, um, into our committee reports and somebody, yeah, Liz just had a question about 289A. Um, that will be addressed in the Government Relations Committee. So um, yeah, we want to have an in-person 
committee con slash member orientation, get to know each other, get to meet with each other. And you can, you know, speak to people one on one and, you know, talk about what you'd like to do or what, you know, get maybe more, more information. So thank you so much, Kevin for doing this. This was your baby. You did. This was great. This is really just what we needed. I think it's a great way to start the year to see, you know, we're, we're a talented um, bunch of people. And so it's good to get, every, you know, to get to see um, a little bit more to have a little more details about this. And I just want to speak also just one second before we do to go to the committee re reports to what um, I think it was Jeremy said about people feel like Gannett can be a little clicky. We are not clicky. We are just it's always sort of the same people doing the same stuff. And so it's all, it seems like, yeah, it's always us. So, you know, jump right in. We want the newbies. We want the new members. Um, and we, it, you know, we will get you too. We'll just, if you say, I could volunteer, we will snatch you up and we'll put you on a committee, you know, before you can say knife. So really come volunteer. We really love to hear from you guys. All right. So let's move on to our committee reports. Thank you again, Kevin. This was wonderful. And we're going to start John Semlak, our corresponding secretary, just wanted to make a few comments about um, the committee reporting procedure. So take it away, John. Yes. Uh, thanks, Emma, for a chance to speak up, speak on this. Um, so uh, I'm honored again to be have chosen by the membership to be the corresponding secretary for another two years. Thanks so much for that. And like a lot of things I try, I'm gonna to try to do it better than I did the last two years. So I've just been thinking about a few things on reporting procedure. Uh, over the last two years, I've generally uh, struggled to get the, the uh, reminder to send committee reports. I often do it later than I wish I did and I, often made the note a lot wordier than I wanted it to be. So I wanna to try to streamline a few things. Um, first of all, I would like, the, regardless of when I send the, uh, the notice, I want this from this point going forward, a default uh, deadline that we ask reports be sent by the, the Sunday, anytime on the Sunday before the meeting. Uh, that allows us uh, we, on the board to review the reports on our Monday prep meeting, we have we usually have a pre-meeting prep meeting on Monday, and we can review the reports, make sure the agenda is all tidied up, and so forth. Now I know you know reports are going to roll in, and we, we understand that. Uh, but if you can make an effort to send them by the Sunday before the meeting, I will continue to send out the notice, but that's going to be the default deadline. Uh, the other thing in the past, I've I, I asked people to send the, the reports to too many email addresses, and I thought this was being useful. And so I told people to send it to secretary at gannick.org and ccjohnsemlack at gmail.com. And I think the I might have even been including my daughter's email and other other like like you know extra emails that didn't that really was just causing confusion when I was attempting to create some kind of you know backup process. So what we what we really want to do is have the report sent to secretary at gannick.org, not my personal email address. The reason for that is, is that the, email, the secretary email gets read by the corresponding secretary myself and the recording secretary, Patrick Casey. I put the uh, reports on the agenda for the meeting and Patrick enters the reports into our minutes. So we both need to be sent those reports. And then we also ask that they be copied to the president uh, just as a backup, so uh, a president at Gannick.org. All of this will be in the reminders that I send out. I'm going to continue to send those out, but I just want to emphasize that please send them only to secretary at Gannick.org and then copy to president at Gannick.org. Okay, we'll be not necessarily to send it to our personal addresses. Okay, not, I mean, again, if it's, I know some people had a habit, send it to a personal address. It's, I mean, if, if somebody sends it to my personal address, I'm going to forward it so that all the necessary people see it, and that's fine, but we just prefer that. Uh, finally, the course, uh, we do prefer that they are written in a Word format, okay? So that's something I'm, uh, uh, you know, so again, if you're, if you're using Google Docs, you know, there's a very simple save to Word for function. You just do that send, and attach it to an email. Uh, that that's how we prefer. So we prefer that they be sent in a Word attachment, Microsoft Word attachment. Uh, I do want to emphasize why reporting is so important. First of all, I, I, you know the 
you know, accessing the reports that are sent by our committee chairs, it's, it's been a tremendous honor because as this uh, round table had, that we've done today has so brilliantly established the, the, so much of the amazing work up at GANIC is done at the committee level. And uh, we, you know, the, it's your reports that both the written reports that you sent to us and then the verbal reports you give at the meetings that inform not only our membership, but then the wider audience, the general public of what amazing things we do at GANIC. And so that, that's one of the reasons for reporting. And we, we really want your committee's work to be highlighted and to, and to, to get the word out. Uh, it is also, of course, important because your committee has given a budget and it is important that as a committee, you inform the membership what you're doing with that money, basically. Uh, so the, your reports are the means for that. Okay. Now, we don't have a strict you know, requirement to report every month. Generally speaking, I think people report when they have updates. Obviously, we, we require a report every AGM. Uh, and I think most of our committees do a pretty good job of, of informing the membership when they have things to report, but that those are the reasons. I want to thank all of our committee heads for sending the reports and dealing with my messages on that and uh, over the last uh, two years, and I look forward to receiving uh, such, uh, again, amazing reports in the next two years. So let's get to our committee reports now, Emma. Okay. So um, we're going to start with the awards committee. So it'll be Matt Baker. Okay. Uh, so I know that last time I went a little over time. My apologies. This report's going to be nice and short. The one thing I have to tell you guys is that voting is almost done. You know, we talked about the, um, the deadline for voting, January 14th. You know, uh, Jeremy's done a wonderful job of sending everyone the link for the voting, and this is for the final ballot. Uh, so this is the last meeting where you can vote for the uh, winners. You have nine days, and I'm going to ask Jeremy to send out the ballot one more time uh, after this weekend, just, you know, so that everyone still has it in case you've misplaced it in your email like I usually do. Uh, so you'll get it one more time, but bear in mind that voting is drawing to a close. If you have questions or trouble accessing it, email, you know, awards at gannick.org. We had a lot of trouble with our email address over the last month. It's been cleared up. We should be receiving it with no trouble. We had our best response ever in terms of numbers for the pre-nominations. It would be great to also get our best response ever for the final tally. So January 14th is the deadline. You know, the link is coming one more time. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Matt. And you can see the ballot. Um, Jeremy dropped the ballot into the um, into the chat. And this is where everyone can vote. Correct, Matt? Yes, this is the one kind of voting that provisional members are allowed to do. If you are any kind of member of GANIC, you can vote on the final um, uh, tally for the awards. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. All right, so our next committee is education. So Nina? Yeah, okay, here I am. Okay, uh, I just, uh, Happy New Year uh, to the new board. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you. Uh, when you uh, see the minutes, uh, I, I have, we have letterhead education committee. And why I think it's important, we list everyone, uh, all the past education chairs through history and mentors and all the guiding spirit award winners because we uh, think of them as our extended family. So I'm not gonna go into everything now, but uh, if you see the report, the minutes, you'll see what wonderful shining lights have been associated with education. And uh, uh, what's coming up, uh, upcoming FAM tour so far, and we we'll always have things, uh, you'll be getting uh, notices in the mail, but for Martin Luther King Day, January 17th, we have a virtual FAM organized by Lee 
Allenby, and it's called Decoding New York City's Martin Luther King Memorial, uh, a civil rights tour of the Upper West Side. So that's really exciting. And also we'll be celebrating Lunar New Year uh, with guest speakers at the China Institute and Bob Gelber is organizing that and Michael Morgenthau, of course, is industry relations. And our, I believe our March guest speaker is going to be brought to you by John Semlack and it'll be at Grand Greenwood Cemetery, I think, so far, and it'll be on the Brooklyn Bridge. So um, if you want, if you have an idea for a fam tour, guest speaker, uh, professional development program, uh, that link that uh, is uh, on the website, you can just click on. Uh, also, at the end of our minutes, we have an index and your name will be in light. And uh, it's a way of people contacting you after your fam tour. Uh, I, have to, I have time to read, for instance, uh, and it's a guest speaker index and a fam tour index. So for instance, Eileen Block uh, brought, brought to you our um, last month's guest speakers from Times Square Alliance. And uh, we had a Diker Lights fam tour with Jeremy Wilcox on December 9th and an encore on December 14th and a World Trade Marketing Center visit with Bob Gelber. So your name will be forever immortalized and people will be have a chance to contact you if they missed your tour for Gannett. They know that you did this tour, you're an expert. And uh, we also have all of our virtual tours, most of them on our website and on a cold winter day where you have nothing to do or wherever you are in the world you can click on and take a tour of the metropolitan museum of art or all the wonderful things that we've done over the past uh years so um thank you very much and i i just want to thank also lisa puccio for putting together that wonderful tape and uh, our, our new member eileen rourke who also uh is has a lot of uh enthusiasm so thank you all Great. Thanks so much, Nina. Thank you very much. So next up, um, government relations with a report from Patrick Casey. Yeah. Um, Patrick, you're still muted. Hold on. Up oh, there we go. I'm back. Okay. As you may have seen in postings on social media, uh, initiative 289A, the bill that would have returned guides to the double decker buses did not get the vote that we were committed to receive uh, this legislative year. Now those commitments were coming from good sources. Uh, the chair of the New York City Council Consumer Affairs uh, Committee, Diana Ayala, and the sponsor of the bill, Yadonis Rodriguez. And we also had very positive conversations with the legal counsel for the city council. In spite of all of that, we did not get put up for a vote. There's a lot of speculation as to why. I think many of you have already heard it. There was opposition out of the, out of the uh, office of Corey Johnson. Uh, he didn't feel the bill was well positioned as a safety issue. So long stories to that and some intrigue, which you may want to find out by joining us on government relations. Now, what all that means is we have a bill that still exists. It is sitting with the Department of Consumer Affairs Committee on the City Council right now. We have half a dozen sponsors who did not get termed out. Our goal is to get 22 more sponsors. And this is where you are all going to come in, all of our membership. Uh, we ask anyone who already has a connection with their local council person, send us an email at government relations, uh, government relations at gannick.org. Explain that connection. We will set you up. Uh, the government relations committee will be working. And in fact, it'll be, it'll be kind of a press kit uh, that will give you some facts, some figures. You'll have talking points to go into a meeting with your representative. We have been pitching this bill, not as a worker protection bill, because that raises some libertarian hackles in the city council, but as a safety issue. Um, with the drivers of double-decker buses now driving more crowded city streets, we've all seen it, and operating sound systems, this is an accident waiting to happen. One of our taglines for 289A is pass a bill with a boring name, 289A. Don't wait to pass a bill with the name of someone who deceased as part of it. So in the coming months, these packets will be prepared. 
we will be reaching out to our membership. We hope our membership reaches out to us. We are a trade association. We are the only trade association with the interests of guides. We almost have a moral obligation to get this passed. If we can't get this passed, why are we even in business? So we're gonna reach out to all of you. We're gonna ask for all of your help. Again, talking to numbers, we get all of you knocking on 51 doors. That's only six doors a person. Isn't that cool? Yes. So please, 289A, let's make it our goal. Let's make it our resolution for 2022. Let's make 10 years this bill has been under discussion and four years it has been sitting on a shelf. Let's move it off the shelf. We need your help. Please check in with us, governmentrelations.org. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Patrick. And yes, and as Patrick said at the beginning, you're all you know, constituents, you're all part of the Government Relations Committee, except for those of us who live in Jersey. Um, but- you I'll give you an honorary member of New York City. I don't care, just come on. Board. I'm still a New Yorker. All right, but contact your council member, okay? And- Get in um, touch with us first, because we're going to equip you with the talking yes. points. Yes, we want those we talking have points. a specific message for everyone to reach out. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so stay tuned for that. Um, but this is this is this is a heavy lift. Um, government relations is doing a great job. But when Patrick, you know, blows his whistle, all hands on deck, all hands on deck. So thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. All right, um, Mike, you're up for industry relations. Okay, thank you. Um, so short report from industry relations tonight. I uh, just want to remind everybody, Nina did this already, but upcoming meetings, February, uh, obviously COVID uh, notwithstanding, February 2nd at the China Institute, March 2nd at Greenwood Cemetery, and thanks to John Semlock for arranging that. April will be another virtual meeting and we're working on future uh, locations for the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, always looking for potential venues, uh, email industryrelationsorganic.org if you have any ideas. Those emails go to myself and to Bob Gilbert. So one of us will definitely see it and uh, get back to you on that. Um, one thing that we discussed at the last uh, membership meeting was a new initiative where we were gonna be attending uh, various national industry trade shows and allowing or offering to the GANIC membership the ability for a fee to send their one pagers uh, with us to distribute at these shows. Well. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing Omicron spike, uh, we've made the decision not to attend both the American Bus Association show, which is taking place this weekend in Texas, uh, nor the IITA show, which is gonna be in early February in California. Um, so we're gonna kick that program off with the Student Youth and Travel Association show, which will be in Washington DC in August. And hopefully all this craziness or some of this craziness will be behind us at that point. So just stay tuned for that, but uh, we will not be attending the ABA nor the IITA show uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, Guide Week 2022, we've been a little slow getting this off the ground, but uh, Mitch and Nikki and I will be discussing it next week, and so look for announcements soon. Um, speaking of CIDA, I wanted to share one event that's coming up in January here in the city that might be of interest to any GANIC members to attend. Uh, they're holding a tour operators forum in cooperation with uh, NYC and company uh, from January 24th to the 25th. Most of the events are only open to tour operators, but one event is open to anyone in the tourism industry, which is the social event, which takes place January 25th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, it's uh, just a kind of an open networking event. The cost is $50. It includes two drink tickets and light appetizers and gives you a chance to schmooze with tour operators and also with uh, student tour operators specifically, uh, and also some suppliers who will also be attending uh, as well. Um, I am not available to attend that night, so either Harvey Davidson or Bob Gilbert, Gilbert are currently planning to represent Gannick at the event. Uh, however, you are certainly welcome to attend on your own to make some connections, uh, and I will share the link for information and registration in the chat right now. Um, so there it is in the chat. Uh, and uh, I don't know that there's a deadline for registration, but I would register sooner rather than later. Uh, proceeds from this event, by the way, benefit the, benefit the CIDA Youth Foundation and the NYC and Company Foundation, just FYI. Uh, and then NYC and Company, 
Um, one bit of news, uh, our friend Fred Dixon was reappointed to his role as president and CEO of NYC and Company by new mayor Eric Adams. Uh, as you all know, Fred's been a really strong advocate for tourism in New York City, especially during the last two years of COVID. And he's always tried to help Gannick as best he can. So on behalf of Gannick, we congratulate Fred and look forward to working with him and the rest of NYC and Company team on helping to rebuild the New York City tourism industry as we come out of COVID. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we will be having a committee meeting at some point towards the end of January. Nothing specific uh, date-wise yet, but we will send out an announcement shortly about that. So thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. And thank you to your committee, to you, to Bob and to Harvey for all your hard work. And yes, congratulations to Fred Dixon. I saw that announcement too, and it was just very, very good news indeed. So um, next we'll go to Jonathan Tour, who will report on behalf of membership. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I have a printer running in the background, so I hope that's not too distracting. Um, I wanted to just start out by letting people know if they weren't at the meeting last month, uh, Derek uh, did step away from the leadership role of the um, membership committee, uh, which is where uh, I stepped in. So I just wanted to let people know about that. Derek is fine. Uh, he's just uh, no longer available to chair the committee. Um, but uh, I did just want, want to repeat my thanks to him uh, as we all thanked him last month uh, for his um, significant service to the committee. And so um, thank you, Derek, one more time. Um, we do have two new members. I'm going to share my screen really quickly because um, I've got some photographs of our two new members. Let's just do this full screen. We've got Alex Aguirre uh, and Joseph Landon. So unfortunately, we can't have them stand up and wave to the assembled masses, but uh, we have their photographs here. So welcome, Joseph, and welcome, Alex. We're excited. Uh, to have both of you joining GANIC this month. Um, I wanted to mention just a couple of other things. Uh, like Emma mentioned earlier in the meeting, if you uh, did not uh, hear her entire address, uh, the annual post-holiday party has been postponed. It is going to be scheduled, we hope, uh, for sometime in late February. But please, please, please uh, keep reading those emails. We will have um, information on that coming out shortly to you by email. So please uh, do pay attention to that if you are interested. It looks like it's going to be a really great party coming up in February. A um, little bit of an update. Uh, as of uh, just a few minutes ago, I think we have 240 members uh, in GANIC. Uh, we had one late addition <laughs> to that number uh, just in the last couple of hours. Uh, so we're up to 240. Uh, that is a, a little bit lower uh, than we were aiming for in terms of the budget projections. Um, so uh, we're looking to get 25 more people onboarded. Um, so if you know people who have been thinking about it, if you know people uh, who maybe are debating whether they want to renew their organic membership, please reach out to them. We think that there's lots of good stuff uh, going on in this next year and we'd love for them to be a part of it. Um, so thank you for all of those 240 members who have renewed uh, and you still do have a little bit more time to do so. So please, if that's been uh, like Matt Baker was saying, if that's that email that got lost and isn't up on top of your most important list, go and find it, uh, get that renewal in. Uh, we'd love to have you join GANIC uh, for 2022. So that's my report. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you, Jonathan. And yeah, just a reminder, um, being a GANIC member, not only do you get to, you know, confab and hang out with all of us and all your fellow um, tour guiding peers, but you also have access to all those great things that we were just talking about before, the fam tours, the digital, um, the digital library of tours, you know, those things are on the website, but those are for members only. So you want to be able to look at those, you want to be able to, to see those, you want to try out your fam, um, you need to be a member. And so 
membership has its privileges, right? All right. So on that note, um, John, Sam, Mike, you, you, do, you did have one more thing to mention. Um, yeah, uh, I don't want to take up too many people's time because I know we're, we're definitely looking to adjourn. Uh, I just uh, I wanted to apologize. I was not at the December meeting where we um, uh, announced the new board. I want to thank you again for being asked to continue in my role as, as secretary. Um, but I wanted to say a few words to our departing board members. I didn't have a chance to do that then. Um, and, um, you know, those uh, all, you know, all the board members I worked with were amazing, but our three departing board members, again, all, um, as Emma said earlier in this meeting, deserve tremendous recognition. Mike Morgenthau was just an extraordinary uh, person. You know, we, all of us who served this last two terms, you know, we, were, we didn't sign up for a, a pandemic board term. Um, and when it hit us and when suddenly, you know, as we all remember our industry unraveling before our eyes, you know, it was very confusing what to do uh, we, as, a, as, as, a, as an association. And Mike had, it was immediately, you know, coming up with, a, with ideas, you know, and he had, he was insistent we have a meeting, you know, we, we, we were our, our venue that, because back then we were still planning on a, a, an April uh, meeting at, I think it was at the St. George Theater. Uh, and of course that was, you know, gradually becoming impossible. But Mike was insisting we have a meeting. We, we were thinking about trying to find another venue. And then, you know, we've obviously, we went to the online meetings uh, and, and, you know, Mike had loads of ideas. And, and in particular, one of those ideas was of course the Tour Your Own City idea. And Mike Morgenthau will be the first to say that Mike, that Tour Your Own City didn't go in the, the directions we wanted it to go, but it was uh, an amazing effort. And I, th I think one thing that hasn't been mentioned as far as I know is that Mike was really early on aware that local tourism would be the way out of the pandemic for a lot of us. And so even though maybe Tourism City didn't quite grasp that quite why we wanted, I think a lot of us who, who did you know, find some, some avenues of revenue during the, the hard times, that, that, that was something that we immediately glued on, to, you know, latched on to. And Mike was aware of that already in March, 2020, you know, and so I think that's just something to say. Um, uh, and of course there are many other things. So I, I, we're gonna really miss Mike on the board. I think everybody would, who is on the board would agree with that. Uh, and uh, we'll of course look forward to his, you know, focusing on the industry relations committee, which I know he's committed to. Uh, you know, Bob Gelber really, uh, I mean, but it seems like Bob just knows everybody. I, I, his connections with all kinds of amazing people. You know, just for example, that 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 those that are those amazing presentations were by Ed Welter. You know, that was because Bob Welter knew Ed Welter, and 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 if anybody attended those, you know, those were incredible. Those were one of the most amazing organic events. So if you weren't, you know, fortunate enough to attend. Uh, that presentation, one of the fans that he gave, I, you really missed something because that was just amazing. Uh, Deborah Blau was, you know, our go-to person with creative skills, our artistic skills, and she, we were constantly going to her saying, "Can you draw this? Can you draw this for for this project and this project?" And you know, she also, you know, off, was often there with a voice of reason. So I'm sorry to go on too much longer on this, but I really wanted to say something for our departing board members. And I hope that they continue to contribute to GANIC. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, John. I totally, totally agree. And everyone on the board does need everyone in um, GANIC as well. Um, the three of you, Bob and Deb and, and Mike have given so much of your, your time and your talents. So um, yeah, well, we can never really stop thanking you. We can never appreciate you enough. And we're very glad you're still in Gannick, <laughs> we <clears throat> still, um, I know we can count on you when we need support and you get a few fewer meetings, which is also always nice. So thank you all very much. So are there any final comments or any final um, questions? Jeremy. Um, yes, I would like to make a motion to adjourn with great gratitude to Kevin Lawrence and everyone who helped put this meeting together. Uh, any second to the motion? Any second to the motion? Susan, Beth are seconding. Okay, so I've got a few seconds here. So 
Thank you for that. Thank you very much, everyone. And yes, Matt Baker put it very well. Once you've been a leader in Gannick, you're never not a leader in Gannick. People come to you forever. So I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. So, <laughs> so thank you, Matt. Thank you for that. And thank you, everyone, all our committee chairs for coming and for participating tonight. I think it's a great way to showcase Gannick, a great way to kick off the year to an auspicious start. So um, I wish you all again, very happy, happy new year. Please stay safe. Please stay safe. Um, keep us posted. Remember, we're also here. My goodness, God forbid if anybody gets sick again. I mean, Mike, oh gosh, I hope you hope you get better soon. I hope everyone stays healthy. But you know, reach out to us too. You've got schleppers who can bring you, you know, groceries, who can bring you medicine, who can try to scrounge a rapid test from somewhere. <laughs> Whenever I see one, I buy it. So, anyway, so. Hang in there, everybody. We're going to get through this. This is just a little bit of winter slump, and then we're going to come out of it bigger and better before. Um, so thank you all for attending. Please renew if you haven't done so already. You want to keep your membership benefits going. And we will see you all again in February. So stay safe out there and have a great night, everybody. Thanks so much for coming tonight. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>